Christian Dead here. Welcome to Jakova. My name is Alice Taylor and I am going to take you on a tour of one of Kosovo's most precious cities. Jakova has been inhabited by ethnic Albanians for centuries, if not millennia, all the way back to the Illyrians. During the Ottoman occupation, some 500 years or so, it was a center of Albanian uprising against the empire, against the Ottomans. And then during the breakup of Yugoslavia, during the Kosovo-Serbia war, it was the scene of intense fighting and conflict and unfortunately many massacres where many Albanians lost their lives at the hands of the Serb paramilitary and military forces. Today, Jakova is a beautiful, beautiful city. It's home to Kosovo's oldest bazaar. And you can literally walk through time here, down its cobbled streets, through the old buildings, looking at all the remnants of the past, different cultures that have come and gone. It is a fantastic place. I am here today for a very special festival, which is designed to explore all the cultural aspects of Albanians, of Jakova, of Kosovo, and of Albania itself. I'm gonna take you on a tour. Are you ready? Haida memoa. So the city of Djokova has suffered massively from various wars over the centuries, but particularly the 1998-1999 Kosovo-Serbia war. Um, it was brutally attacked by the Serbian forces and up to 75% of the Albanian population were displaced. There were also some massacres around here, in particular the Maya massacre which happened in April 1999 and saw over 370 ethnic Albanian men and boys aged from 16 upwards murdered. This was in fact the largest massacre of the conflict. After the war ended, most of the Albanian population returned to Jakova and the city was for the most part rebuilt piece by piece. However, I think it's fair to say it has not returned to its glory days, you know, before all of these conflicts occurred. I'm here at Jakova's Old Bazaar, otherwise known in Albania as Trashia of Yeta or Trashia Imad. At its peak, it would have been home to some 500 different shops, if not more, and it spans 35,000 square meters. This bazaar is the oldest in Kosovo at over 500 years old. It would have been a bustling and thriving hub for gunsmiths, for silversmiths, for goldsmiths, for cutlers, for people dealing in fabric and textiles and weaving chilims and various different types of other crafts. Today, in the post-war period, it is busy. There are lots of shops and restaurants. You have artisan ateliers dotted throughout, but it's not quite at its former glory. Many of the units remain empty and there is work to be done to bring it back up to how it was before. I've spoken to some of the artisans here. There are people working with wood, with leather, um, with paintings, but they all tell the same story, which is there's not enough clients for it to be truly sustainable. And also the younger generation are not particularly interested in learning these trades and continuing them. So many of these old skills, which have been a part of Jakova for many, many centuries, are at risk of dying out. Sika Emrin, the Sarabit Kapun Milekur. Veste per quai, per quai, per me punu token, per se masi carosite atas, per noi ripa, tanto da prei le cuor, vettem le cuor, ripa tanto da, calipa pica da, calipa se olpia da, to per punim, se prendete in tari, chanta. E de chuni, io te nuca interessua? Io nuca, e compaci sca, Nuk mundet me o majt familje me këtë zeja, atëhere o shkollu, ka bo e kom tunin arkitekt është, a e ka vazhdua e kom su pakes me punu, edhe me marrë shprejen për me punu. Êshtë punë shumë e buku të lënë shumë duhe atë. Kjo është, kjo është artë, artë për mu atë. Unë e qenë 25 vjetë që përnaj. 
Če pes zlate pes, vjetve je po nekaj za nam. E do baba jo? Kaj po njemu baba jem, ko bi to od, v nekom so v zanatnem gaji. Baba jem je kam so v nga baba i vet. Edhe pse baba i vet je ka ljon dy vječara bavim tam, po ađa, vlavi i bavis, ka čem dve vječara. Edhe vse dni je kam nismo po njemu. Ko bi to od, po. In da me tomu, on je me generata trajt. Edhe me mu profundan. Profundon se nuk ka interesim. Oshtë duke si për, në thamë se si kur shumë zanate që në zhduk. Në zhduk shumë zanate djetër. A shtu do të zhduk e të kërë zanate njonë me mu profundon mali. Se oshtë zanate djetër. Kërë zanate duhet me urujtë nga shteti, nga qeveria, nga instansat të shtetit. Duhet me mëna mënsu, mëna përruja dy në zanësa, që atyne në zanësa e ne me jolion këtë zanate. Po ata në zansa dojnë pak pare, dojnë mjetër. Shqo që dhe këtë, si dhe mos trit nuk dojnë, për para ka pas interesim me zanatë në mësi. Trit nuk për nuk mësojnë zanatë, pa i dhonë, pa i dhonë në dishka mjetër. Eh, për atë, kërë them unë e që s'kemi pun ka ta katër mujë, dhe më thonë ne i presim ku të vijin këta diaspora. Atëherë ja dy javë ka pun, për për ndryshë e masa nejve që rrinë gjithë, gjithë jemi të nejë për aduqanë e. Si ka emrin, për nga jeni origin, edhe për sa vitë ti e për pëtëra? Po, unë jem Violeta Hoxha, atelea që është atele viki. Katër muj është që e kam hapë këtë atele, mirë po në vitin të vëtë të të kam bitë mu, në Akademin e Arteve në Pështin, në degen e pikturës, edhe që 36 vite unë e punoj si piktora. Shumë e, edhe është piktore në shumë, shumë e buku, po, Qëfar është inspirim për pikturën? Inspirimi është familja, gruaja shqiptare, si që shikë e një po, motivet i lire, motivet tona. Mirë po kryesisht jam inspiru në një rajon tonin, në Kosovë edhe në Shqipëri që është rajon i hasit. Edhe ato jenë me këto veshjet edhe me motivet, si që shikë e një. Të më thonë, ende i mbajna pa motivet e vjetra i lire, që jënë dekorimet, stilizimet, edhe ato të njejta unë i paraqes në përfikturat e mija. Edhe klientë është mire zhehuaj, diaspore, po shqiptarë? Po, po në përgjithsi, për momentin kemi shumë nga diaspora, shqiptarë tonë, kemi nga Shqipria, Macedonia, kemi të malit zi, do më thonë, barë shqiptaria, mirë po edhe të huaj, vinë si dukët shumë interesante, me qenë se është një art i veçant. So the old bazaar is full of clothing shops, whether it's traditional items like this, or shops with the most incredible uh, dresses for events. We're talking huge ball gowns with sequins and beads and glitter and everything imaginable. And I asked, you know, is this a tradition for Jacobo? Because I've never seen so many dress shops together in one place as I have here. And the answers I got varied. Some people told me, yes, yes, you know, because this was the center of trade. People have had this dressmaking tradition working with textiles and fabric for centuries. It's been passed on and on and on. And um, people come from all over Kosovo and even the north of Albania to buy dresses for weddings and special events here. And then some other people said, no, 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 it's just how it is. People in Kosovo love to dress up and wear these big, beautiful dresses. And every city is like this. I, being a bit more romantic in the way I like to think of things, I like to think that it's a tradition, people making clothes in Jakova that's come from centuries and centuries of trade influence and influence from around the whole region, and that's why there's lots of dress shops here. So I'm going to stick with that one. So, uh, actually, my friend told me that uh, the festival did it as was going to happen. And I was really interested because I wanted to help uh, other people for this organization. And I really wanted to see um, other cultures coming from other countries, such as yourself. And I was really interested to see other people and the activities that we do here. And it's actually pretty fun. Yeah. You're from Jakova? Yes, I'm from Jakova too. And this festival, it's one of the greatest things that, uh, that I have ever experienced. I'm having a lot of fun. 
and this is all. I mean, we're having... And what are you studying at the moment? What are you studying? Uh, well, I'm going to, into the college this year. I'm planning to study medicine and I hope it will be a great journey for me because uh, as a student, uh, medicine is a great, great uh, hard field, so I'm planning. Do you plan to stay in Jakova eventually or to come back to Jakova? I would like to come back. Uh, Jakova is a place with great uh, traditions and uh, I want to help for my, for my city, my country, because uh, at all, I, I, I was born here and I want to do things for my country. Would you say to somebody who's never heard of Jakova and never been to Jakova, what would you say to, tell, to get them to come here? I think that you should totally visit our, uh, our city because it's very traditional and it's very beautiful. We have very welcoming people here and I think you would probably like it. What's the best thing to do in Jakova for both of you? Uh, I think it's probably hanging out with my friends to different cafes because, as you can see, the uh, the cafes are very beautiful and in also the yeah, <laughs> and also walking in the city because it's very it has saved its uh, its traditional history. So uh, I probably say it's a very beautiful city and you should definitely visit. I would uh, I would say the food too because the food yeah. is amazing in here. We have it. Uh, okay, so we have a food called Flia. It's I amazing. <laughs> yes, I want to try it because it's amazing. Its taste is delicious. I had some food today. Some? Yeah. yeah. With, with sujuk. Yeah. Yeah. I gained like three kilos. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank And I want to find out a bit about what motivated you to start this festival. It, it happened back in June, it was quite quick. What kickstarted this? Okay. Um, it's very hard to pick a date or a person or a place where, but uh, it was a kind of a synergy of uh, some uh, guys and some people that now we established this uh, foundation that um, we have just been in the meantime together here in Jakova and started uh, talking about something organization uh, festival in Jakova and now we're manifesting this. The, the goal is to fulfill the cultural life uh, especially in Jakova. Because of the war in 90s, 19, 1999, uh, Jakova is known as the most damaged uh, city mm -hmm. in uh, Kosovo, um, in uh, capital uh, area and also in people and uh, Jakova has to re, re, rebirth and uh, re, reinvent uh, itself. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to put it back on the map and encourage people involved in culture to regenerate in a way. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And the events that we've had last week and that we are having in these days, can you tell me a bit about how you picked the various people involved? Was there a, a recipe you had or certain criteria? 
Well, we try to have the best uh, artists that are active in the musical scene in, in Kosovo, not only in Kosovo, but in, uh, uh, in Albania and Macedonia as well, wherever the Albanian language is uh, spoken. And we try to be uh, focused more on the artists that can offer a live spectacle, uh, mm -hmm. like in a, in a sense that every, uh, all the concerts are going to be uh, performed live without uh, any, uh, how should I say, DJs in the background. So yeah, we picked one of the uh, one of the best artists, and uh, we made a lineup for about uh, uh, seven days. Of course, we had a, this time we had a limited uh, budget, so uh, we were quite dependent on uh, also the uh, goodwill of the artists to cooperate in 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 this sense and. I should not uh, uh, forget to mention also a very big help from the municipality of Jakova, who uh, in fact uh, uh, secured for us uh, the logistical uh, aspect and also the technical uh, uh, aspect as well. Like and what has the reaction been from local people? Uh, you're in the bazaar here, there's lots of businesses, there's artisans, amazing artisans. How have they reacted to the influx of people and what's been going on? Well, the, the reaction is quite good. First of all, uh, we know that, uh, I mean, in general, Jakova has a very good reputation regarding the artistical life. It has given uh, a lot of artists for the Albanian scene in, in, uh, in general whether they are musicians or uh, painters or writers or poets and etc so uh, the people are quite uh, curious mm -hmm. and uh, they are very supportive when it comes to uh, organizations like this so yeah we've dis we've uh, uh, divided the uh, the festival during the day in three scenes uh, one is the in uh, Adipodrimia uh, center uh, where more theatrical uh, musical plays are being held. And then the main scene is here in Chashi, in the old bazaar of, of, uh, of Jakova, when the main event is happening at, the, at 10 o'clock, with more, uh, if I can say, party, party vibe. vibe, yes, exactly. And then there is a minor scene uh, at the Yupas Bazaar, or Chashi Yupave, which is more, if I can say, more intimate, and they play more on uh, uh, room music, if I can say so. Yeah, acoustical versions and so on. So one of the nights of the festival, we were treated to watching a film by Rita Ora's grandfather, Basim Sahadchiu, I think I pronounced that right. And this film is amazing. It was sort of an ethnographic documentary that he made in the 70s, I believe and it depicted a day in the life of a typical Kosovo-Albanian family living in a village not too far from Jakova. And what made this really interesting was that there were actually 117 members of this family, from the elders, the great-grandparents, the grandparents, the parents, and then a whole flock of children. 117 people living in a traditional stone Albanian country house I wasn't sure if it was a kula or not, but it was one of the old traditional houses. And it just depicts a day in their life, you know, from the morning, cooking, eating, going to school, watching TV together, you know, everything that goes on in this family. And it was amazing. I mean, can you imagine 117 people living together? I mean, I have so many questions about how this works logistically, but everyone looked very happy. They had different tables at dinner time, you know, there was like the very young children sat together, the slightly older children, the teenagers, then the women, the, the men of sort of middle age, and then the elder men, all on different tables, all eating. And then the, the last shot was all the children coming out of the house and going to school in the morning. And it was just this steady stream of children coming down the stairs, that, 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 through the garden and off to school. But this is how many families would live uh, during this time in Albania and Kosovo. You know, generations all together under one roof, living in relative harmony. Even today, you will find quite often not 117 people living together, but you know, grandparents, great grandparents, aunties, uncles, and then you know, parents and kids living together in the same house, maybe on different floors, but in the same house. Not to the same extreme, but 
there are still elements of this in Albanian culture and society today, very different from how it is in the UK, where we sort of cannot wait to leave home at sort of 16, 17 or 18, and then we very rarely go back. So I've also been having some fun with the language. People say, oh, don't you find it hard to understand the Kosovo dialect? No, because I spend quite a lot of time in the north. I've had colleagues from Kosovo before, so I do have familiarity with it. But it's funny, sometimes people are talking, especially if they have a very thick accent, um, and they're talking and I'm like, I, I know I should know this, but it's not quite clicking, you know, because there's the differences in the dialect. I notice people here say Mirpo a lot. This is not something I hear much in Albania. And then there's different words, you know, Parmel instead of Chumsti, Patajan instead of Domat, uh, Trungul instead of Kastravets. These are just a few I can think of off the top of my head. And Falaminers instead of Falaminderi, but this is in the north of Albania as well. Um, I like the accent, but I was talking to a guy in a bakery earlier and his accent was so strong, his dialect, I, I could not understand what he was saying. It was really tough for me, but it's, it's a beautiful language. I always prefer the northern dialect, the Geg dialect of Albanian. I've also been reading quite a lot about what happened here during the war. It's not something I've talked too much to people about because I know it's still a touchy subject. Um, but I mean, the, the atrocities that were carried out here by the Serbs, I mean, it's just unimaginable. The military would go door to door, purging entire families. I mean, they were shooting men, women, children, young children um, indiscriminately, or they were removing them from the house, separating men and women, displacing them. Sometimes the men would be shot, the women and the children would be able to go to the Albanian border and cross into Albania. Rape and sexual violence was also used in Jakova. There were huge amounts of people killed. There were bodies left in the streets. Uh, local members of the Roma community were tasked with picking up the bodies. And I read one of them who said um, that he, if it was just one or two bodies, they would bring sort of a, a car. Uh, if it was more than two or three bodies, they would bring a tractor to pick them up. And just the horrific brutality, the senseless killing, you know, just going into a house and witnesses were talking just hearing hundreds of gunshots you know, from automatic weapons and they just wipe out entire families there were massacres here over 370 Albanian men and boys including children were separated from the women in Mea and, and murdered many of the bodies have not been found some eyewitnesses said they they remembered passing through the village and seeing these bodies piled up four feet high, four feet high. It's horrific. Most of the, the city was forced to leave. Um, they, they couldn't return. They went to Albania. What this city has endured is really incredibly sad. Something that upsets me even more is that the people who were displaced from Jakova, who lost their husbands, their wives, their aunts, their uncles, their children, their livelihoods, their homes, they came back, they rebuilt their lives and the people today, they're so friendly and warm and kind and happy and welcoming. And, but the people who committed the crimes here, who murdered people, who committed sexual violence, who burnt people's houses down, who destroyed the city, who committed horrific acts of violence and yes, genocide, they have not been brought to account. They've not faced justice. Uh, the majority of them are free, um, the ones that are still alive. You know there has been no accountability. And Serbia, the Serbian government, which refuses to recognise Kosovo, which is actively undermining the country's sovereignty, which uses aggressive rhetoric to drum up hatred against Kosovo Albanians, to deny the war crimes, to deny the genocide, to deny the attacks that happened here and the things that happened during the war is rewarded by the European Union. They face no sanctions, no issues, no problems. The Serbian authorities were very much likely involved in a terrorist attack in Kosovo nearly a year ago. They kidnapped policemen. And yet Kosovo is the one that has faced sanctions. The EU, the West, appeases Serbia and does not hold it to account for the things that happened here. And when you read about what happened here, how many people were killed, how they were killed, you really understand how much injustice there is and how much injustice remains after the end of the war, many years after the end of the war. And I think coming here and seeing, you know, the impact the war had and the, the scars, you can see visibly the scars, you know? 
this really brought it home to me. And Serbia needs to be held to account. It's never too late. They need to be stopped being appeased by the EU. Because we can never risk anything like that happening again. So it's with a heavy heart that my time in Jakova comes to an end. And I'm a bit sad for two reasons. One, there was so much else I wanted to do and see. I wanted to go to Spaler Kuzaret. I wanted to explore the old mosque, the hammam, the teches, several museums. I didn't have time to do this, but it's a good reason to come back. Not that you need a reason to come back. The other reason I'm sad is it's been such a wonderful experience. It's, we've been made to feel like we're at home, like we have a second family here. People are incredibly welcoming and friendly, and this has been an amazing experience for us. Jakova itself is full of wonder. It has so much potential. There are so many stories here to be told, so much potential for the old bazaar and for tourism here, not just within the diaspora and the Albanian speaking world, but further afield as well. And it's initiatives like Dita de Shiptaret, which play an important and a crucial role in this. And it's lovely to see the enthusiasm of the younger generation and people from Jakova in preserving this place and trying to promote it and its culture as much as possible. If you've never been to Jakova, there's no excuse. Come now, come and visit it, enjoy it and explore it and love it like I have. Until next time, Miro Pavship.